You know, they say that good communication is key in any relationship. So today I'm going to show you how to make Logic, the iPad and the OP1 all talk to each other. It's going to be a wild ride. All right. Yellow leather, 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 leather. Yellow leather, red leather, red leather, yellow leather. Is that the... Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Brad. If you're new around here, I make music. And for about, I don't know, a little more than a year, I have had the OP-1. And ever since I got it, while it has kind of changed the style in which I make music, I've wanted to be able to incorporate it into the style that I had developed for years, making music with Logic. So last week, I kind of warped my brain, I'm pretty sure, figuring this all out. But I've got the iPad, the OP-1, and Logic all in sync with each other. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. So the first step in making this all work is making sure your max audio settings are correct. So what you want to do is go into your audio MIDI setup. You can do that by hitting command space and typing audio MIDI setup and hitting enter. What you'll notice here is I'm in a thing called audio setup. I created this because once you plug in your iPad, which is step two, all you have to do is hit enable iPad. And what that does is it turns itself into an audio interface. So you need to create an aggregate device, which is right here. And what that does is it allows you to combine multiple audio interfaces at once. So I've already done that, but that's how you do it. Um, and you would check all the audio interfaces you've got. I've got a Behringer UMC, UM, UMC 404 HD. That stands for high definition. I don't know. I don't know why they call it HD. So I'm using this called audio setup. I've got my iPad set up as an interface, my UMC actual audio interface, and I've got this old Line 6 guitar pod that I have enabled as well. I never use it, but why not just have it just in case. The thing you want to pay attention to is your input channels here. This is important. Take note of this or just keep your audio devices window open because you might need to come back to this. Let's go over to Logic now. Now, once you have Logic open, you might need to go and set up your preferences to use your new audio setup. So right now I've got my audio device output to go through my regular audio interface because that's where my studio speakers are hooked up through. And the input device is this aggregate audio device I just set up. So now my input device is my iPad and my audio interface and my GX. Once you'd have that set up, you'd have to hit supply changes, uh, but I already did that because I haven't made any changes. Now you've got Logic taking all of your inputs incorrectly or not incorrectly. You've got Logic now reading your inputs the correct way. So now you need to create an instrument, an external MIDI instrument and check this use external plugin box and hit create. What you're gonna see down here is this guy. And that's already set to uh, MIDI destination iPad, which is where it needs to go. Now you'll notice here that no matter what keys I hit, Todd, they put, buddy. There's no sound coming out. So this is where the iPad comes in. Now that we've got the audio interface being read correctly by Logic, we need to start creating some audio with the iPad. I have Beatmaker 3. Now this is a paid app. It's a fairly premium app. I think it was like 30 bucks or something like that. But the only reason I'm using this is because it's the only thing that I have that is Ableton Link enabled. You might be thinking, why do you need Ableton Link? The hardest thing for me to have figured out was the fact that despite using Logic, I need Ableton Link. Ableton Link doesn't exist in Logic. For whatever reason, they haven't started support as of this video. Maybe they will in the future. If you're using Ableton, this whole setup is probably gonna be way easier for you. But if you're using Logic, I'll show you exactly how I did that. So let's create a new session. Now, you're there's still nothing happening. In Beatmaker, you're gonna need to go through and make sure that your audio is set up correctly. You'll see we've got these MIDI things here. Beatmaker 3 is obviously itself. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. The main thing here is the IDAM MIDI host. That is actually what's happening here with this lightning cable into the Mac. As of like OS High Sierra, I think they implemented MIDI and audio over lightning. So that is why all we need to do is plug in our iPad to the Mac. Figuring out how 
simple that was, was, was not simple. IDAM MIDI host, that just basically means we're working with the Mac here. We're gonna input to that and we're gonna take information from that as well. Setup on the beat maker side is good to go. Everything should be in communication. Before I show you how to sync everything, let's at least get some sound happening. In Beatmaker, we're gonna go ahead and load a plugin. I recently bought this Syntronic uh, synthesizer app which is insanely uh, versatile. It's got like 22 or something vintage synths that it's been modeled after and it sounds pretty great. If everything is set up properly, I should be able to hit my keyboard and make some sounds happen. Incredible. We basically can control the iPad from my Mac. And because I have the OP1 plugged into the Mac as well, I can control the iPad with the OP1. I could even do this like, um, let's do. This is all good, but what if I'm grooving? I've got a I've got a loop set up here in Logic or something like that, and I wanted to maintain tempo here so I can add without thinking about how the tempo works. And it needs, you know, it's a kind of a mess. Everything up to this point is uh, fairly easy to figure out. But this next step was the part that broke me. It took me so much mental effort to figure this out. And when I figured it out, finally, it was so easy. Like I said, the most crucial thing here is despite this being logic, we need Ableton Link. And Beamaker 3 has Ableton Link. Right now, just enabling it doesn't do much. We need another app. And this was also a paid app, but it was only 99 cents. This app, I don't know, I, I forget who made this app, but whoever thought of it did exactly what I needed. And when I found it, my brain was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. This this app does a couple of different things. Its main function is to take Ableton link information and convert it into a MIDI signal. So you can hook up external MIDI gear and have your apps control your external gear. But I wanna have Logic be the master tempo. So it also will take MIDI information and turn it into Ableton link information. So it kind of um, vice versa, it reverses itself. And this is perfect. But first you need to set up IDAM MIDI host, oops, as its MIDI source, okay? And then you hit enable sync. We have to go and hit a few more buttons in Logic real quick. In Logic, what I'm about to show you, it, it resets per project. So you might wanna save it as a template. Just gonna throw that out there. Essentially, all you have to do is go to File, Project Settings, and Synchronization, and then MIDI, and you have two destinations available. Destination one and destination two. You'll see in this dropdown list, iPad, and why don't we just go ahead and send some MIDI information to the OP1 as well. Now, the other thing I like to do, this stuff basically triggers all the other external gear and it, 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 this drop down menu does stuff, but I don't really know how to explain it that well. I like to pick the pattern and set a number of bars. I usually start with 16. Let's go ahead and change the tempo to something weird, right? I have Logic set to a tempo of 176 BPM. Right now, this thing is saying 120 and the OP1 is saying 124.9. If I hit play, it'll start sending all the information. Now, without hitting play, information does not get passed along to anything. In order to get things working, Logic needs to be playing. So let me hit play. Look at that. Look at that. So what you're seeing here is things are not quite exact, which is one of the bugs. But for the most part, you're not gonna notice these millisecond tempo differences, especially when it continuously resets. Now, if I take you back into Beatmaker, you'll see that this is already syncing in tempo as well. Right now, if you hit record in Logic, that's just MIDI information. 
If I were to unplug my iPad, there would be nothing happening. So what you've got to also make sure you do, create an audio input. Earlier I said to keep note of your audio inputs when you created your aggregate audio device. When you want to create an audio recording from your iPad versus just a MIDI recording, you need to make sure you're on the right audio input. So when I added the iPad as an input, it automatically created channel one and channel two as its inputs. Uh, normally my audio interface would take those, but the iPad pushed those all back. If you want to record anything, you've got to create a new audio track and set its input to one of those from the iPad. So now you get both MIDI and audio. Let's try to record something real quick just to give you an idea. Actually, let's change the tempo real quick to something a little uh, more sensible. Let's say, let's set a tempo of 110. Like I said, Nothing on anything is quite reading it yet. So let's make sure we hit play for a second, get everything into speed. 110, 110. All right, we're gonna go ahead and record something real quick. So now if we mute the MIDI track, we've got just pure audio. Of course, you could take your headphone jack if you're using an iOS device that uh, you know still has one, which mine does. Uh, you could take a, a cable from one and plug it into an input, but you you might lose a little bit of quality this way. Probably not much to make a huge difference or anything, but this way you get audio from the app directly into Logic as the sound was intended. The last little trick is making the OP1 play through Beatmaker directly in Logic. Uh, so with this cable, uh, this is a standard headphone jack to a TRRS cable. So it takes a regular audio input and converts it into a microphone input for a mobile device. I believe Android uses this as well as iOS. And you can get uh, just a straight adapter. I just had this actual cable from a microphone. It allows the information from the OP1 to go directly into the iPad. And since the audio coming from the iPad is going directly into Logic, therefore it goes directly into Logic. You'll notice some noise. That is a pretty common issue when you have the OP1 plugged in to a USB source. Usually if I'm gonna record audio, I'm not going to have it plugged in just to get rid of this noise. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna leave it plugged in. If I wanted to play audio out of the OP1, I can still keep the same setup without changing anything. But the issue, if you have it plugged in, you might also be triggering your synths and stuff because we haven't really set up MIDI channels or anything like that. Because to be honest, I don't really know how to separate these MIDI channels, but shh. But you can just mute that. That allows you to take some AUV3 effects and throw those on here. So let's say I've got this cool effect called Replicant. I'm gonna show the plugin real quick. I'm gonna do this. And all of that can be recorded directly into the iPad. Plug in your iPad, enable it as an audio device, combine it with any other audio devices you might be using, assign that audio device to be used in Logic, set your tempo and MIDI information to send information to your iPad and your OP1, set up your OP1 to be reading information from the lightning cable, use this app MIDI Link Sync to read all that MIDI information and translate it into Ableton Link, and then send it to your Ableton Link enabled application. In my case, it's Beatmaker 3. Uh, but there are a lot of others. I'm sure there's some sort of app that has Ableton Link and it's a free app as well. So if you don't want to sink any money into like a iOS DAW, you know, look around for that. I don't really know off the top of my head though. And then you have uh, all this information going into one source and everything is synced in tempo. All right guys, so that's going to wrap it up. I'm pretty bad at explaining things technically. So if you have questions, make sure you ask in the comments and I will do my best to answer. And I also wanted to ask if you guys uh, are currently using iOS devices for music creation, do you have any app recommendations? Uh, this is all pretty new to me and uh, I can see it being quite flexible. I would love to know if you guys have any killer app recommendations. I will be back soon with the new jam and more tutorials. I do want to show you guys how to use the OP1 and the iPad just by themselves. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, um, bye, I guess.